Has Been Heroes hits the Switch this week, and we all have been playing it. What's up, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. I've got Gabe and Jake here for a review discussion on the new indie title from Frozen Byte hitting U.S. eShop March 28th and European eShop April 4th. It's 1999. It is a roguelike lane-based game from the team that brought us the Trine titles. And this one, uh, we were given review code, and all three of us have been playing the game. And it is a very interesting and challenging game, and so we're going to give you our different perspectives and thoughts on it uh, and let you know if we each and, and different ones of us think it's it's worth your pickup this week. So starting things off, um, I saw this game way back at the Switch reveal event in New York City um, in January, and I thought it looked really interesting. And we got a chance to play it at PAX South, and it was incredibly difficult. And without any sort of tutorial, um, it, it was pretty tough to grasp what was going on. <laughs> Little did we know that it wasn't only the demo that didn't have a tutorial. The whole game just kind of doesn't. <laughs> now, we played the full version, and, and I will say there is a small tutorial, but a lot of this game was discovered and uncovered via the three of us piecing together different elements through our many hours of the game. Now, on one hand, that is a, a kind of a, a negative that, hey, they really should tell you more. On the other hand, it was kind of fun, like... In a way, in a, yeah. in a weird, weird way, kind of almost like a Zelda type a, thing, where you're like, like discover, frustrating, like a frustrating, but also a little bit fun, like a, a tinge of, of joy in the frustration of like, oh my god, I just discovered that this is why this, and and, and I, I, it's, it's just kind of go over our experiences. Yeah, I guess, and because it's not that there's no tutorial, there's a tutorial on how to do the battle mechanics, and like, that's like you can understand that pretty well. It's just there's like so many items and spells, and like the way the game works in general, and like what's happening overall is like. Hard, is hard to understand because it doesn't say anything, but there is apparently a day one patch that is going to offer up more tips, so I'm interested to see what that means. But yeah, it was like, so I knew how to play the game, but I didn't know how like to play it well because I didn't know all the little nuances that were going on at right. the same time. And I guess, Gabe, before we hear, hear yours, because I think you've actually played the most, yeah. um, basically you've I've played, gotten the farthest. That is true. And I'm Did just smack dab in the middle. Uh, that'll, that, that'll, that'll tell you something. Middle. You've got... You've got Three characters. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> you have three characters on the screen, and they uh, are used in a real time battle, but you can, you need to use the pause button constantly. Constantly. And, so it and turns like, into like a turn based game. <laughs> that, so it yeah, becomes turn based, and it's not real time in that. Oh, you're pressing like square does the sword slash, and X does the. You have some spells, and you have your your default melee. attack, but it's it's really just pressing the button of the lane to activate that hero to do an attack. Uh, down that lane, and then they can swap lanes. That's uh, the main and, and, mechanic. That's right, unique. and they have meters that are filling up to determine when they can attack again, when their spells are ready to be cast again, and basically it involves juggling these characters between lanes uh, to attack the monsters. Different heroes do different number of attacks, and you need to match that up to the stamina of the enemies so that you can open them up for a stun and for, for more damage. So it's a lot of... Uh, number balancing and also hero balancing as you move between the lanes to try and one you know attack the enemies that are coming at you close because if they touch you uh you will take damage and if any one of your heroes dies game over the run is over yeah so you want to balance you know okay obviously keeping the enemies at bay while also using your your numbered attacks to deal the most efficient damage and repel the waves of monsters and eventually repel the bosses um and it is a very very uh, nowhere near the same gameplay style, but a Dark Souls level of punishing in that they don't want you to win a lot. It definitely is about losing and losing and losing. I don't and know because like the now that I figured it out, I haven't faced them any struggles. Like to for me now, it's just incredibly time intensive because I'm constantly yeah. like, tiptoeing and like tapping that L button to pause the game like nonstop, and that's like what kind of was frustrating for me at the beginning. I was like, why did they make this action? based game into like a turn-based game like why don't they just make it a turn-based game but i guess it's again it's kind of gr growing on me um where i'm liking it more but the main thing that was so frustrating for me at the beginning was it is a roguelike game so you're doing runs each time after you die um you're starting a new run and but like none of the spell you're like unlocking like new spells and items and things but they weren't carrying over so i didn't feel like you were powering yourself up at all really the only thing like you power up is like your mind and your ability to you know, combo together your, your spells and characters in a way that will most efficiently use um, their melees and their spells to keep the enemies pushed back as far as you can. So that was the most, like, frustrating thing for me. Was I felt like I wasn't growing in any aspect. I wasn't, like, gaining new spells or new abilities or leveling up my characters to progress further in the runs. Really all it was was that I had to learn how to stop time better and, like, line things up into, like, future moves and plan ahead better and learn a few little of the elements like the candles like that you have a, a center of candles and those are 
consumed when you go back to a room that you've already been in because the map is structured in a way that kind of like Darkest Dungeon style or a number of uh, roguelikes have done it this way where you're moving between rooms that are shown on kind of a little, uh, mini, map. little mini map and if you return to rooms to try and go back to vendors that maybe you didn't have money for in the past um, you will consume a candle and then no candles you are consumed by darkness and your runs over but things like that yeah it's more like a, a roguelike where your knowledge is improving each run rather than yeah. your actual like profile or your characters um all right because i once i start talking i feel like i'm probably going to be like the most negative on it so like I, I feel like maybe we should talk about like the positive things uh, um, sure one the price it's not a full price game so uh that that, that in itself is is pretty good i think I, I think for the price the game is fine um i was expecting a little bit more um just like technically like yeah it's pretty one-dimensional yeah and, and like the drawings and, and the art style while it can be pretty you, you've mentioned this zach uh, just like tangentially but it, it's not consistently pretty like some stuff looks like way better than other stuff like the princesses mm-hmm. like that are behind you constantly like during battle and whenever you're like running through the areas they like look like way better than the actual like heroes for some reason um mm-hmm. probably because like they don't really like move a lot and the heroes have to like move and and have like attack animations and things like that that's probably the reason why but i just feel like what 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 jake said like about y- you having like no real progression um other than like unlocking new heroes and I, then i guess like trying runs with different heroes uh that's some type of progression but other than that your heroes are going to stay what they are and i wish there w- there was some way to like have the run be with like some very like specific like magic or spells that you're like familiar with or that you like uh because uh, unless i'm wrong and one of you guys can tell me if i am whatever magic you unlock like you're gonna get it randomly through the vendors like you have no way right. of like uh, yeah, uh, I, selecting it again yeah i think yeah. the game is i think the mechanic is fun i think the mechanic they have there is yeah. an addictive mechanic and i think it 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 just loses some of its luster because, A, it's not up front with exactly what you need to do, which, if you're patient, you, you'll figure it out. It's not like it's that complicated. Right. But it, it could lose some people early on by being too obtuse. And then I think it lacks the progression that I, people come to expect from roguelikes. So when you hear, like, oh, it's a challenging lane-based roguelike game of strategy and action, you're like, okay, this is great. and be unlocking new heroes and be unlocking new spells and be, you know, improving. And you're not. You do unlock characters. And... Oddly, it, it says in their press release there's 12 heroes, but the character select screen has, like, 30 slots or something, so I'm not sure what that's about. We have collectively unlocked two new heroes, which shows you how difficult this is to unlock. Well, it's more like time-consuming, but yes. Yeah, and so I feel like the, 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 the main element that keeps this from being, like, a must-buy is that there isn't a whole lot of sense of progression. And, yeah, and so, like... I've unlocked two new heroes because when you go through the first run, you have to go through two areas and there's a boss at each at the end of each area and then you get a new hero and then the next time you go through, you have to do three areas in a row to unlock the next hero. And so now the next time I go through, I have to do four areas in a row. So really it's not that they're like stacking like difficulty or like new things. It's just like they're stacking more like time onto it. It's not like they're, you know, nothing's really changing except just the amount of time to spend um completing more areas and the runs yeah. can take a while like these yeah. boss battles can be 20 minute boss well because battles. The, the, you're, again you're not progressing getting your guys stronger the only thing you're progressing is your knowledge like you said and you, the, most of the the games um the key mechanic is to keep pushing guys away from you and to, so it's not that you're killing them faster it's just that you're keeping them at bay longer right until you can finally whittle them down and another thing that was just really confusing and like you were saying something that keeps it from being great is and uh, something that could keep people from enjoying it with like the first couple runs is when you unlock like a new item or a new spell you just like pay for it with your gold or whatnot but it doesn't tell you what it is until you already acquire it yeah. and then you're supposed to like you keep like a, like, a log that, that like, it unlock when you get a new spell or a item and you use it then it keeps a log of it and you can open up that in the pause menu and kind of relook at it but, but it there's doesn't like tell you co- in that it doesn't tell you in that menu does it yeah it does like for this for the sp- Spells and items it does not for characters. I'm pretty sure for I know I know for items it for sure does. But like when you're but when you get a new one and there's like over 300 spells and over 200 items, when you like open a new chest, you don't you can pick like who you want to give it to. But you have no idea what the item does. It's just like a, a weird pendant, and you're just like, what? And, the, this could do like right any, any number need, of things. You need these because the way to progress, especially after you know you extend those runs to two bosses, three bosses, four bosses, is by 
purchasing as many items and as many spells as you can. Yeah. And so you acquire gold from non-boss battles and then use that gold at the little, like, vendors, you know, throughout the map to buy spells. And there is a heavy amount of, like, RNG because y you are getting random spells. So if you get a bunch of crappy spells, well, that run's probably not going to go very long. Or if you get some really good spells, this is your chance to unlock a character. And it just feels like some of the decisions weren't very well thought out in, in terms of why is there no character progression? And, and if not, then let's be really upfront with the things that you're acquiring for the characters, right? Because right. if the characters themselves are not going to get better, then I feel like they there's an obligation to let us know what are these spells. And to me, it feels like a lot of the challenge is not based on player skill or player input, but rather the game deciding how difficult it's going to be that run. Yeah, and to yeah. be clear, we know that as soon as you get the spell, you know what it does. Yeah. But, like, when you first open the chest, it's just, like, a little icon there. And unless you've, like, seen it before, like, enough times for you to just remember, like, you don't know what it is. Like, if it's a new spell, like, you don't know well, which character the, to give it to. One of the most fun things about roguelikes is that even in death, even in loss, you, you have a victory because you improve or you gain something, you unlock something, or you're adding. And there is no additive quality here unless you Except win. Except for new characters. In, which is if you win. Right, yeah. So that... <laughs> So the roguelike element, I feel like, I feel like it's a death-like yeah. because there, there's there's not a whole lot of, of of upgrading or there's none really, and so I wish that the only upgrading is in the in the run within like, the run, yeah, right? And you lose and it none all. of that carries you lose over. All your gold, you lose all your orbs. And, and you lose obviously, everything. like we don't we don't want all the spells to carry over or all, but it would be nice if your characters improve because again, let's say there even is twelve characters. Eventually, you're gonna have to get to like twelve bosses in a row. Yeah, that's and, a long run. Right, that's a very long run. And th there's some really cool mechanics that uh, that support these long runs. Like, for example, different spell slots that your characters have do different things. So eventually, the rogue has a spell slot that buffs the entire party. Or mm -hmm. eventually, the monk has a spell spell slot, I believe, uh, that you know improves the strength. Or you know the warrior has a spell slot. And the characters, even if they're not designed the best visually, I like the fact that the warrior is like this big, strong, you know, they they very much fit their type, right? The monk is better with spells. The rogue gets a bunch of attacks, so she's better at taking down big stamina which bars. Again, like, and you can select who gets which items and who gets which spells, which is why they should tell you which what yeah, they do so you know very, who to assign them to. I find myself like, oh, well, it would be nice to boost the monk, so I'm going to give the monk stuff, and then they'll be like, this boosts his, you know, like, recharge time. I'm like, I don't need more monk attacks. <laughs> I wish I could have given this to the warrior for his big one attack, because, again, it's about matching, like, if an enemy has three stamina, you'll use the rogue's three attacks to cut that stamina down. Stamina emptied, stunned. Then you'll switch the rogue, or sorry, the warrior up to that lane and use his single attack, which is the most damaging attack, uh, to try and take that guy out. And every time you stun and damage, they get flung back in the map because right. this is you know you're watching gameplay right now it, it's a game that's much better shown than, than told yeah. um so you're well, seeing e e even like seeing it I, like I, it can be like a little overbearing and it, it might be a little yeah. confusing and the thing is like it's one of the games that like if you think it's interesting you're gonna have to play it for yourself well and, 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 and it's a kind of weird that it works this way but the more you play, the more fun it becomes. Because when I first played it and I couldn't beat the bosses, I was so confused, so frustrated, I just wanted to put it down and never play it again. But then Zach showed me like a little trick of you have to keep pausing you it. Like, have constantly. to pause, and it says right here in one of their their tips they gave us uh, that it says uh, don't waste time in battles. Every millisecond counts, it, and it literally is like it's very true. I pause, unpause, pause, unpause, yeah, pause, unpause. Constantly. Yeah. Even if you're not even like it's just to calculate things out and like feather assume, it. Yeah. yeah, like but um. When I was in the 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 second run, going through the three uh, areas to get a new character, um, at the end of that and the third area, I had seven spells going instead of just the three. Plus, I had some different items going. So, being able to use all those different spells, and I had some spells that would like um, instantly recharge all of their melee attacks. And so, like I would uh, combine that with a different spell that would you know do damage to the guy or stun him or something like that. And so, like, being able to have all that, and, like, so if you have four runs, you could have, like, 12 or, like, nine right. spells going on, um, or 12 spells even. And so, it's kind of unfortunate that the only, the way it becomes more fun is if you put, like, a few hours into the game already. And so again, it's, like, hard, you have to get past that first, like, their, their, their foundational gameplay is good because the different spells, it's it's cool, and you can mix and match them, and there's even elemental effects. Like, if an enemy is wet and you use a wind spell, it does more damage. You know, there's there's freezing, there's burning, and they have some clever things, like skeletons in, in the, all in a line will burn together, and, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's some great interplay between the spells and the attacks and the heroes, and I like that, again, that whole lane-switching mechanic. It just feels like they had this great base idea and then didn't really build upon it with... 
player like player focus choices mm-hmm. you know it, it, it feels like a game and I thought this was really interesting um, I heard how Breath of the Wild was every time they hit a milestone they would have the team play the entire build which is a really unheard of practice but it helped them really understand and you know iron out everything and make it as player friendly as possible and it feels like this was not developed in that way at all because it it is in in a lot of cases anti-player because they aren't telling you a whole lot it can be very incredibly difficult and yet and daunting it still is is an addictive fun game that i find myself even wanting to play now because once you do get some some new spells it's very cool or like the bard the first character you unlock he has a water spell that is i feel far more effective than the monk spell yeah. And, like, it's cool that it's a new-looking character. He's got a different spell, and his weapon and spell, his weapon helps your team regenerate health, and they they do a nice job of, of making sure that the heroes are different enough to support your runs in different ways. It's just hard without any progress to, to be able to see these heroes. Again, Gabe, you say you play around 15 hours. I've played about 8. Jake's played probably around there Five, as well. Man. And we have unlocked... I've unlocked one hero, and Jake's unlocked two, and Gabe's unlocked zero. And... Yeah. <laughs> I think it just speaks to the fact that, and like, I mean, and with me, I, I think this is the biggest problem of the game. Like, it's too difficult, and mm-hmm. I and I don't say that like lightly. I I have beat every Dark Souls game. I've beat I've, I have beat Bloodborne. Like, I'm not like bad at video games. That's not it. It's just that, like, it's frustrating how time consuming this has to be if you want to be successful at it. Like, I think I think it's the difference between challenging and difficult. Challenging is like, hey, the game is very hard, but with, with your skill and with your efforts, you can learn and beat it. And difficult is more like, okay, the game is out to get you, and there's not really any way. Yes, we learn you know, the pausing, and yes, we learn some of the spell combining, but if you don't get good spells or you know, you get some of the harder bosses, there's you are basically toast. Yeah, the, the, the game can totally just like mess up a run for you and like you know at, at one at some point you might as well just restart the run and just hope for better luck so like things like that is what frustrate me um, and i'm also concerned of how this will do on like a home console as opposed to like on the switch because like on the switch you can it's got like the pick up and play style where you can just put switch in sleep mode in the middle of a run whereas like if you're playing on a home console you have to like sit there and do like a run for like multiple hours at a time and it's not like your skill won't make the run go any quicker like you yeah. have to invest that amount of time so like switch it works okay because you can you know like i said like put it down for like a while and then pick it back up and put it down and pick it back up but like a home console i guess you could like pause your state and come back to it but i just feel like it'd be much more difficult and like we, frustrating if, if you put your ps4 or your xbox one in sleep mode it'll still pick up exactly where you left off right but it's just not like the switch you can take anywhere so you could be like playing the couch and then go to the kitchen and do like another battle in the kitchen whereas like You'd have to sit there and play for like a, a while to yeah. feel like you've got. In, in other terms, it's a cool portable game. And to, yeah. and to be clear, this is coming up. You know, all the platforms. It's on Xbox. Right. It's on PlayStation. It is on PC. So you know, if the game interests you in any way, you, you should definitely check it out. I don't. I, think I, don't like, I, I don't think it's a bad game. Even I, I just think it's like, like not. It's it's not good. It, it, it's like on the borderline of mediocre and like, it's a little too difficult. The game is a little too obtuse. I wish they explained things better. Um, but you know, it, Again, it, it is what it is. I think it's a good mechanics. Like Zach has talked about good. I understand that fully from the beginning and that was fun and interesting. I think that maybe with the data and patch where it adds more tips and things that might help a little bit, but I don't think it's too difficult. I think it's just time consuming because as soon as I, I beat the, the first run of two areas and unlock a new character. And then the second, my, my very next try, I beat, went through all three areas and unlocked my second character. So I haven't died yet. Like, I haven't failed a run yet after I figured out that you have to be pausing constantly. So I don't know. Again, I don't... It could be... It's not... I don't know if it's, it's difficult. I think it's just time-consuming. I, and- I absolutely think it's difficult, Jake. I, I I won my first run to get the bard, yeah. and I have not won a run since. So maybe it's not, hours. Yeah, so okay. It's, it's just a game is just screwing you over. And I think... They they nail the the mechanic and you know the presentation is what it is. I, I wish it was a little prettier, but you know it still has some charm to it. But the balance is what seems off. Yeah. There is no progression to fight back against that RNG. There is no progression to fight back against the difficulty. And it's fine to have that level of randomness if you are improving. Because again, oh you get stuck with a bad run. Oh well, you're at least making some gain. Right. But it's frustrating to spend an hour into a run, gain nothing, learn yeah. nothing. 
And it's very true. I do wish there was some enemy variety. It says 200 plus <laughs> enemies, but almost all of them are skeletons with different hats. <laughs> or with like a, a skeleton with a heart on it or something. It would be nice to see, you know, skeletons and gremlins and, and, and you know, dragons. and I mean, there are a few differences. There is like a... <laughs> there's the Flying Dutchman. There's the Flying Dutchman, basically. <laughs> there is a rock lava monster. There are these, like... Zombies. Zombies. There's uh, man-eating plants. But it's mostly skeletons. And, and if you're going to have all these different areas, like, you think they'd have, like, different types of enemies in each area. And they might have, like, this one's, like, a fire skeleton, this one's, right. like, a water skeleton. But, like, you'd think, like, okay, like, the, the, the forest is going to have skeletons, and then the I, I just wonder, like, how hard would it have been wolves. instead of drawing ten more skeleton hats just to draw, like, three more <laughs> different bodies? You know, like, a, a grizzly bear or a... Again, I think it's just it's just what takes this game from being okay to being good or great. Yeah. Again, and it, it's frustrating for me because... The mechanic is really good. And like I said, I still, in spite of saying, like, I don't think this is a great game, I still want to play it. Right. <laughs> because it has, like, a really great pick-up-and-play feel. It has a really addictive mechanic. And the challenge or the difficulty... Well, it's not it, it, the it makes, difficulty it, you want. It makes you think it's challenging, and so you want to keep trying, <laughs> and then it just bites you in the butt. But it, it, it's so close to being, you know, really fun. And it's interesting to me because, you know, trying were games that utilize a lot of skill in ways that made the player feel smart. And I think that they, they went again with a three-character system. They went again with characters that do different things, needing to utilize all three. But unfortunately, I don't think this game makes you feel smart. I think the game feels smart <laughs> because it outsmarts you because you have, there's nothing you can do. You know, yeah. and, and that's just... You have to get lucky. It makes the player feel I hate lucky to think, I hate to think that my hours invested into it and my what the result is is dependent on if the game gives me a run that is winnable. You know, I hate thinking, because at a certain point, how much more can you do? You pause every second, right. use the spells. A lot of it is the randomness of what spells you get, so it's almost like each what enemies run is a, you get. It's a dice roll. And and from there, that's where, you a know... A very, very long time consuming yeah, dice roll. Yeah, the slowest dice roll <laughs> that a hand has ever rolled. And, and that's the point where I'm like, maybe I should just put this down. Because if if my time invested does not gain me any sort of edge or any yeah, sort what of... Yeah, what, what is it getting you? Like, realistically? like I mean, the, new ca- the characters are what I want to unlock. Okay, cool. <laughs> so you un- so you unlock a new character and you do the exact same runs like with the exact yeah. same bosses with different characters. I don't know. Yeah, th- like, even not even player progression, but there's also like no real game progression because all yeah, you're doing like, is, is I mean, stacking on a region. Deeper, deeper regions, more bosses, and you, know, you are unlocking different enemies and different bosses that you get to see. Yeah, but they're There's very much the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It feels like a really good idea. That and why would they put all the variety so deep into the game? So you have to like trudge through this. Well, big exactly. Swamp. That's what I said. I played eight hours and have one character. Gabe's played almost fifteen. <laughs> has zero characters. That's just not very rewarding. And I right. think yeah. I, I feel like it's a super strong idea that just got mucked about in its full. Or maybe it's fun for the developers because they know every character and every spell already, so they don't. They need have everything like, unlocked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but either way, I, I feel like just in in its in its creation process or in its realization that something just got lost in translation because the mechanic is solid, the foundation is solid. We're just missing some balance elements, some div- some progression elements, some difficulty elements. Um, and I I wish it had that because I think this could be like a highly recommended Switch title. And I'm hopeful that maybe, you know, the, the, the patch, it does say have balance fixes, stability fixes, gameplay improvements, interface improvements, visual effects improvements, t- extra tips, additional uh, now cleared battles give you extra bonuses, spell element teaser after elemental boss battles, ability to play endings. From, like, there's a whole lot in the patch, so maybe <laughs> maybe the patch is going to like fix many of these issues. Unfortunately, we can't speak on that at the time, and no one can until that day one patch hits. As it is right now, though, I think this is a game with a really cool mechanic that... Is frustrating enough to deter a lot just, of people. It's lost in translation. Is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Which I hate to say because it, these are clearly talented developers that that had a very good idea, and it it stinks to see it not reach its potential. That being said, 1999. If you're willing to take a chance, I think there is still fun to be had. And for me, like eight hours out of twenty bucks, I'm happy. <laughs> I, I legitimately feel like if I never play it again, I still got my twenty dollars. I, I pay. Sometimes movies cost twenty dollars. I pay, I pay two fourteen dollars a ticket out in L.A. for a two-hour movie. <laughs> You know, and that's fine. And I'm buying popcorn, so that's a twenty dollar experience right there. <laughs> so for twenty bucks in eight hours, even if it's not the greatest, I feel like I got my money's worth. So this is a really like your mileage may vary type recommendation. It's it's hard for me to say 
this is a purchase or this is not a purchase because I really think it depends on what you like, what you're into, and how you value well, your also, dollars. Also, maybe we should update when day one patch comes out and see how much of this that fixes. Yeah, yeah be, that- I'm definitely going to play it come March 28th and see if if some of this stuff changes. Um, because, I mean, look, best case scenario, they make these adjustments and this game moves from sort of this like frustrating but addictive Very territory <laughs> to something a whole lot warmer and a whole lot more inviting and a whole lot more recommendable. And that would be great. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Gabe is not too hopeful. No, I, I, I don't. I, I personally don't see it because, like, that patch isn't going to fix the problems. That all these areas are pretty similar to each other. Yeah. Like, and the it, fact it, that it does, it does lack in variety. Even severely. if you have a successful run, like you're going to play that same area again. Like, I, I don't know. There's only so much you can do there. But you know, twenty dollars, it, 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 it's, it's fine. I, I don't. I don't hate the game. I, I I played it for 15 hours, so um, a lot of that was just out of anger because I didn't know what. Like I was very <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> and I, I hate but, to say this, but the Switch's limited lineup makes this probably more alluring than you know it on like PS4, right? Because PS4 is a billion titles to play, but on Switch, you know, and and we mentioned it in other videos. I will give more games a chance on Switch than I would elsewhere because of the fact that I can bring them with me and play them portably. <laughs> Look out for Snake Pass videos coming next week. <laughs> and I, yes. I, I, I've heard good things about Snake Pass, so we'll have to see about that. Um, <laughs> you know, I just I picture a world where you're able to like do little, even like little percentage upgrades to the monk or to the warrior or whatever, and boost them a little bit to sort of build attachment to heroes and improve them and, and or upgrade. Choose what star- spell you start with or something. Yeah, yeah, I just. Hmm. Close, I'd, but no cigar. I'd love, to talk to, I'd love to talk to Frozen Bite and hear what their perspective on this all is. You know, what sort of what their idea behind it was. Because to us, it seems like, gosh, why was none of this included? But I'd love to know what their, you know. I don't know. It does feel like a, a game where they, they kind of like thought it'd be cool for you to discover like everything on your own. But it's also not very, like, there's no, there's no rewarding thing yeah. to keep you, you going need, back you to You need the progression more. to keep, yeah, exactly. Right. So that's Has Been Heroes. We're curious uh, if you guys pick it up, what your thoughts are, and we'll probably make a video uh, post patch. But for now, um, I think I think it's hard because it's it's you gotta watch the game plan, kind of decide for yourself. I think is that where we kind of lie in terms of like I guess, yeah. I guess that would be a, a buyer. It's tough because I mean I played it, we played at PAX for a few minutes there, and I still like came away like I don't I don't even know what this game is without like the t- tutorial really. I mean, it kind of told you how to play, but even playing it for a couple minutes, like I still was like, oh, okay. It's it's hard for me to put this into any category of like, oh, recommend it or buyer beware, because again, like I want to play more. So what does that what does that say? I don't. You have a very compulsive. <laughs> yeah, personality. Like, I don't know what that says. And, and you guys know me. Sometimes I torture myself with things I don't like at all, and I do them anyways. Yeah. Um, like fifteen hours of Has Been Heroes without any progression, or like or like watching two episodes of Iron Fist and knowing that I hate it, and then watching the rest of the eleven. <laughs> that episodes one doesn't anyways. make any sense to me. So like I do things like that. Um, no, I I I definitely think Has Been Heroes has some like redeeming qualities. I I, I definitely think so. Um, it's just you're gonna have to get past the the, the limited uh, variety. You're gonna have to get past the fact that I'm also wondering like I'm in the, this pocket of where like I feel kind of good because I had two successful runs in a row. But again, like you were saying, like you could encounter, like I could go back to the same regions, like for the next like twelve runs, and like, well, and with, is that like am I actually gonna fall I off? I feel like the sweet spot is it. between like hour two and hour six because that's where you right. Get so like, am I am I not interested you, you, anymore? You get a grasp on the game, you understand what's going on, and your runs are short enough that if you fail, it's okay. Because yeah. remember, now you're dealing with four, a run five, that is twice six. as long as the initial <laughs> run. <laughs> So if you get all the way to the end and fail, that is double the time invested oh, for no reason no. and no I don't progression play anymore. <laughs> so I, I think I think the sweet spot really is like hour two to six. And, and again, it just kind of depends on how you value your money. For me, I'm perfectly happy. I, I want to see the hours. rest of the characters. I do. I know. I want to see the characters too. I'm, I'm, I don't want to spend. I'm really going through 18 I'm really curious or how this is received and what all happens once you know the, the public has access to this game. I think it's going to sell a decent amount because of the limited Switch library. And then I'm curious to know what the feedback is going to be from that. We have seen a lot of middling scores, which kind of would match up with what what we feel. Um, and I think they echo a lot of the same things about where's the progression, the difficulty is spikes and, and peaks and valleys unexpectedly, and you really have no way to get an, an upper hand on it because you, what can you do, right? You don't know the spell, you don't know the whatever. Anyhow, that's has been Heroes again. Releases March 28th, Tuesday. In the U.S. eShop, April 4th in the EU and AU eShop, 1999. Uh, it is coming to other platforms, but obviously we have a Switch focus here. Uh, any final thoughts from you, Gabe or Jake? Good I luck. 
<laughs> it's a big gray zone. Yeah, you need you need patience and perseverance, but you can't squeeze some fun out of it. Just if you're gonna play it, use the L button. Even if you don't want to, yeah, you have to pause, pause literally every like even second. If, even if you're not, you don't have anything charged up. You just have to keep like tapping it to like be able to make better decisions. Yeah, get, decide as soon as it, like literally the split second the spell is ready. That yeah. could be the difference between you winning <laughs> yes. the run and losing the run. Exactly. It's so like oh my god. So this is like when you're trying to annoy your significant other by pausing like a TV episode every <laughs> one second. Like I need to hear this again. I need to hear this again. Utilize that skill in Has Mirrors because they are not wrong when they say milliseconds it's like a flip count. Book. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. So all right, we'll 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 put an end on our thoughts. Let us know what you think if you're going to be picking it up. If you do pick it I up, hear what you think? I want to know this. your experience. You got any stories? Let us know. Has Been Heroes 1999. Your mileage may vary. Very long discussion for a game. I think I think it's good though. I think it's good to to, to it's dive very in. elusive to grasp yeah. onto. We're, we're we're grabbing at straws here, and next week we'll be grabbing on snakes. So stay tuned for our next review discussion, which will be all about snake I pass. Like that. Uh, until that time, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you think of Has Been Heroes. Until next time, for myself, Jake, and Gabe, Switch Force out. <laughs>